All right. All right. I'm going to call this uh, meeting of the Squim City Council, this work session to order. The topic of this work session will be for this councilor vacancy selection. So we're going to move into an executive session. So we'll meet in closed executive session for a period of 45 minutes until 545, pursuant to RCW 42.30.110.1H to evaluate the qualifications of a candidate for appointment to elective office. The city council is expected to take final action in a public council meeting immediately following the executive session scheduled to begin at six o'clock. So we are adjourned until 545. All right, so the city council has returned from executive session and we'll be at recess until six o'clock when our regular session is set to start. Okay, I'm gonna call this meeting of the Squim City Council to order. If everybody will please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Item number three is the new counselor selection and oath of office. But before we begin, I just want to thank everybody that applied for the position. And I would encourage those if you were, are not one selected to apply for any squid, squim board or commission that we have. It's a great way to continue to help with the serving the community. And again, I would uh, encourage you to apply. So let's see. I will go ahead and I will turn the meeting over to the city clerk right now, who will go through the process and lead us in the nomination and selection of a new counselor. All right, so I'll just run through the, the few steps here to begin with. Um, I will recognize, um, I will take nominations. Each council member may nominate one person. Uh, the clerk will call for nominations three times before closing the nomination period. A nominee who wishes to decline the nomination must do so immediately after the nomination period is closed. The clerk will then take a vote on each candidate nominated in the order in which they are nominated. Council members will raise their hand in order to cast a yes vote. Council members can only vote for one candidate and abstentions are not permitted. The candidate who receives a simple majority vote will be appointed. If after a first round of voting, no candidate receives a majority, the top two vote getters will then be voted in a runoff. All right, so. Oh, okay. um, after we're done with the selection and we'll go straight in the square and in the correct afterwards, uh, we'll take a five minute recess afterwards. All right, who would like to nominate first? Kathy? I would like to nominate Nicole Hartman, please. Calling for nominations twice. I would like to nominate Kelly Berger. And nominations for a third time. Nominations are closed. So I'm going to read Nicole Hartman's name and each council will raise their hand casting a yes vote. So nominate or votes for Nicole Hartman. Uh, that's five in favor, one opposed, and co votes for Kelly Berger, one. And looks like Nicole Hartman. All right, I'll invite Ms. Harmon up to the dais and we'll get you sworn in. Okay. Okay. So you repeat after me. Okay. Nicole Hartman. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear or affirm. That I 
That I am a citizen of the United States. That I am a citizen of the United States. And state of Washington. And state of Washington. That I am legally qualified. That I am legally qualified. To assume the office. To assume the office. Of city of Squim, council position number seven. Of city of Squim, council position number seven. That I will support the constitution. That I will support the constitution. And laws of the United States and the state of Washington. And laws of the United States and the state of Washington. And that I will faithfully and impartially. And that I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge the duties of this office to the best of my ability. Discharge the duties of this office to the best of my ability. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, counselors. And we will be adjourned till 610. Okay, I'm going to call us back to order, and will the city clerk please take roll call? Councillor Kathy Downer. Here. Councillor Dan Butler. Here. Councillor Vicki Lowe. Present. Deputy Mayor Rachel Anderson. Present. Mayor Brandon Janice. Present. Councillor Harmony Rudder. Here. Councillor Nicole Hartman. Here. All right, moving on to item five, approval of the final agenda. Is there any changes to the final agenda? I move that we accept the agenda as published. I second that. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Any opposed? All right, seeing that, motion passes. Item six, ceremonial. We have a few tonight. Um, you have an Earth Day Proclamation, Bike Month, Autism Acceptance Month, and Child Abuse Prevention Month. So, Councillor Butler, we'll go ahead and start us off with Earth Day. Okay, thank you. Before I read this, I'd like to propose that uh, we change the wording as it's been published in the third paragraph. Currently reads, whereas the current global health crisis reminds us and goes on. And uh, when I read that, it... it uh, brought to mind the pandemic, uh, which is no longer current and still very serious. But I wonder if we could, if you would agree with me to change that to the current global climate crisis reminds us that people around the world are connected and so on. Any objection to me reading it that way? And Okay. I have a... Um, thank you. Um, I, I, I definitely echo your thoughts. I would say that climate change um, in, in that one of the side effects of that is increased smoke um, and heat and that in its of itself is um, a respiratory um, health crisis um, and um, and a, a, there's just there arrives a point at which the human body can no longer cool itself, yeah. and that requires more air conditioning, which then exacerbates the problem. So um, I would say, yeah, I think it's all interconnected. Um, maybe there's a <laughs> we're wordsmithing this proclamation in the middle of this. I love it. Um, maybe there's a way for it to be both health and climate crisis. I would second that, what Harmony said. Does somebody else then want to read, to read this as you want it amended? Because oh. I can't do what you just asked me to do on the fly. Oh, gosh. I'm so sorry, Dan. Um, is there, um, <laughs> well, no, I please, please read it. So here's, here's um, a thought, just have it be, um, the global health and climate crisis. How about just global health and climate? Okay, let me give it a shot. So okay, I think well. you're going to do great. Everybody I've... in agreement with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Whereas April 22nd, 2024 is the 54th anniversary of Earth Day, and whereas 54 years ago, the movement galvanized by Earth Day resulted in bipartisan legislation creating the Clean Water Act, the Clean Air Act, the Environmental Protection Agency, all signed into law by President Nixon. And whereas the current global climate crisis and health crisis reminds us that people around the world are connected by their vulnerability 
as well as by the strength of teamwork. And whereas Earth Day is an opportunity to recognize the role each person and community plays in protecting and preserving our clean air and water. And whereas SQUIM City Council has among its goals and success factors, the commitment to environmental sustainability and long-term resiliency. Therefore, Brandon Janesey, Mayor of SQUIM, hereby proclaims April 22nd, 2024 as Earth Day in the city of SQUIM and encourages all citizens to pledge to reduce waste of all kinds from water, energy, and carbon emissions to food waste and trash and to celebrate SQUIM's opportunities to enjoy the outdoors and our clean air because that's good for our health. What's good for our health is good for our community and the earth. Signed on this day, 22nd of April, 2024. Any other comments from council on this proclamation? All right, and we'll move on to the second one, Bike Month and Councillor Downer. The City of Squim Proclamation for National Bike Month. Whereas the City of Squim envisions a city where people of all ages and abilities have the option of bicycling safely and conveniently and has adopted plans and policies that will achieve this aspiration. And whereas the month of May has been designated nationally as Bike Month and the Squim Bicycle Alliance has organized related activities and whereas the Olympic Discovery Trail through SQUIM attracts thousands of bike riders each year, providing economic, health, transportation, tourism, and scenic benefits for locals and visitors. And whereas SQUIM is designated a bicycle-friendly community at the bronze level by the American League of Bicyclists, and whereas Friday, May 17th, 2024 is National Bike to Work Day. Now, therefore, Brandon Janice, Mayor of Squim, does hereby proclaim the Mary, oh, the month of May. <laughs> Sorry, that was Robin Hood. The month of May Bike Month in Squim and urges all residents to join him in this special observance. Any comments from council? All right, seeing none, move on to Councillor Rudder for Autism Accept Acceptance Month. Thank you. Proclamation for Autism Acceptance Month. Whereas, as stated on neurologyadvisor.com, April is Autism Acceptance Month, formerly known as Autism Awareness Month. Autism Acceptance Month is meant to highlight the issues affecting people with autism spectrum disorder, ASD, and their families, educate the public on support services, and celebrate and destigmatize the perspectives of those living with ASD. Whereas, and whereas historically autism has been considered to be a medical condition in need of a cure and the voices of adult autistic people have largely been disregarded. The autistic community needs their lived experiences to be listened to and for the general public to have a greater understanding of neurodiversity. The adult autistic community does not view autism as a disease, but rather as a neurotype. Much of the disability associated with autism comes from the lack of accommodation in society rather than the condition itself. This is reflected in the high suicide rate and low life expectancy of autistic people. With the right support, many autistic people can and do thrive. And whereas, as the understanding of autism has evolved and expanded as a diagnosis, more people worldwide have been diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder, as well as other developmental disorders. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, 5.4 million people and one in 36 children in the United States have been identified as having autism spectrum disorder. Given the prevalence of ASD, encouraging education, providing resources, and working to remove the stigma of autism becomes all the more important. And whereas, the theme for Autism Acceptance Month is Celebrate Differences. 
This theme promotes acceptance and encourages connections to support and re resources such as the Autistic Self-Advocacy Network, the AutismAcceptance.com, and the Therapist Neurodiversity Collective. And whereas autistic people deserve the opportunity for quality of life, dignity, and fair treatment, and we celebrate the immense contributions of all neurodiverse people, perspectives, and experiences made to our community. And now, therefore, I, Brandon Janice, Mayor of the City of Squim, and on behalf of the City Council, do hereby proclaim April 2024 as Autism Acceptance Month and encourage citizens to learn more about autism, to improve early diagnosis, to learn more about the experiences of autistic people from autistic people, and to build more welcoming and inclusive communities to support people with autism. Thank you. Oh, signed on this 22nd day of April, 2024. All right, and I will read the proclamation for Child Abuse Prevention Month. Whereas children are our nation's most vulnerable members as well as our nation's most valuable resources, helping to shape the future of SQUIM. And whereas positive childhood experience like loving caregivers and safe, stable, and nurturing relationships can help mitigate trauma and the negative impact of adverse childhood experiences to promote the social, emotional, and developmental well being of children. And whereas childhood trauma can have long term psychological, emotional, and physical effects throughout an individual's lifetime and impact future generations of their family. And whereas childhood trauma, including abuse and neglect, is a serious problem affecting every community in the US and finding solutions requires input and action from everyone. And whereas children who live in families with access to concrete economic and social supports are less likely to experience abuse and neglect. And prevention is possible because of the partnerships created between families prevention advocates, child welfare professionals, education, health, community, and faith-based organizations, business, law enforcement agencies, and local, state, and national governments. And whereas we acknowledge that in order to solve the public health issue of abuse and neglect, we must work together to change hearts and mindsets through storytelling and sharing, center the needs of families, break down bias and barriers, and inspire action from expected and unexpected partners in prevention. Whereas knowing the facts about child sex abuse can help adults better understand what to look for and how to prevent it. As parents, caregivers, and trusted adults to the young people in our lives, we play an important role in protecting them from abuse. Whereas we are committed to advancing equitable, responsive, and effective systems that ensure all children or families are healthy and thriving, and whereas we recognize the need to prioritize kids and investments in more prevention initiatives like home visiting and strong family strength strengthening policies, economic supports, and community-based abuse prevention programs at the national, state, and local levels. And now, therefore, um, I, Brandon Janice, Mayor of City of Squim, on behalf of the City Council, do hereby proclaim April 24th as Child Abuse Prevention Month and urge citizens to pledge to protect the children we serve and care for in our community, signed on this 22nd day of April 2024. And I don't know if I see them here, but I worked with um, the Squim Boys and Girls Club and the YMCA and Squim School District on these. So we have um, proclamations and an opportunity for them to speak. You're welcome to come up if you want to speak on this, ma'am. Thank you, and thank you to the city of Squim for this proclamation. Um, I, my name is Jody Minker, and I work at the Olympic Peninsula YMCA and YMCA of Squim. And we just wanted to um, come and represent and say thank you for um, making the time for this important 
uh, subject and that we as an organization who serves our um, children absolutely um, are committed to the health and well-being of children and um, being partners with the city of Squim in this endeavor is just very an honor. So thank you so much. Thanks. I believe there's one more to speak on that, but while we wait for them to be able to, was there anybody on any of the other organizations that would like to speak in response to Bike Month, Earth Day, or Autism Acceptance? Hi, I'm Megan Euchre, resource analyst. I just wanted to also encourage everyone for Bike Month um, to visit City of Squim. We do have a web page where we talk about the the Squim Bike Alliance, which is an alliance with city, but also with small businesses, bike enthusiasts, and other folks who are promoting and enjoying biking in our community. So you can find a lot of information about some great events around the community in honor uh, of this national event. And I just brought some sample bingo cards that we have up on our website if anyone wants to check those out. So please, en please uh, enjoy that and happy Earth Day. And, and I might just uh, add my comments to uh, Megan's. Um, so we meet quarterly. We just got done meeting with the other bike associations groups. Uh, there's four or five of them that meet together. We were have been meeting with them annually or semi-annually and we just met with them last week and we decided to do that quarterly so to coordinate more and more activities for around biking so we're very um, actively involved with the community trying to make this a bike friendly city just wanted you to know that is the other person ready to speak are they in the zoom audience they're a guest is there anyone who is attending remotely that would like to provide comment I was also wondering if we could invite, um, well, um, I just, um, on the subject of Earth Day, I'm really excited for Arbor Day um, event on Friday. Yes, at, <laughs> in Cary Blake at noon. 1230, excuse me, 1230, Carrie Blake, um, I'm going to be there and um, there's, we're going to partner with um, students to plant trees around the, um, the pond um, in Carrie Blake and it's going to be awesome. So powerful to um, put back into Mother Earth. Thank you. Is it my turn? Hi, Annie. Thanks for joining us. Hi, hi Vicki. Thank you. Um, so I am Annie Guthrie, and I am the social worker from Squim School District. And I am just, I wanted to come in and say, um, on behalf of the school district, thank you for including us and in giving me this opportunity to come here tonight. Um, we care about the children in our schools and this community, and we will continue to work towards bringing awareness and an end to child abuse. Um, thank you again for your guys' efforts, and have a good evening. Thank you. Anything else from Council on any of the proclamations? All right, see you now. We'll move to item seven, city manager. So as you can see under, oh, should I go with my report first and, and then, okay, let me do that. 
I was going to refer you to the other bullet points, but I do have some uh, department updates. So I did want to let the council know that um, we had a senior management retreat on Wednesday. We took your work from your retreat and uh, you came up with like eight items and then you um, went to the whiteboard or your uh, facilitator, Dave Mercier did, came up with some next steps. We took all that and have now uh, put a work plan so on the operation side around what you considered next steps we're just fine tuning that and i will be able to present that to you probably by the end of the week for you to consider you can move things around or talk amongst yourselves or whatever uh, and let's fine tune the work plan which will be then operations kind of um, map for going forward for this week around your goals. So I, I, I just, that, that will give us all something to aim for, uh, for you to evaluate next year, et cetera, et cetera. So felt really good about a very productive uh, half day retreat that we had. So um, you can be expecting that by the end of the week. Um, also uh, from the clerks, but also from the city manager office, we wanted to thank those of the council that had, there was a few of you that just had some trainings that needed to be done. Some were just not recorded correctly, but anyway, we finally got all that done and we're good to go. So thank, thank you for supporting that. Uh, from the finance department, just one last uh, for any city residents uh, or your constituents that might be listening. We heard a nice report from our finance director last meeting who talked a lot about the new Tyler software update and the need to uh, the utility billing will be reset as of May 1st. So all customers will receive a paper copy, copy excuse me, um, around the 7th of May. And for those uh, residents or customers that want online billing, they'll have to go back into the new system and re-register. And we hope they do because then we don't have to use paper to send bills out. So we can do all that, but the new system requires new registering, new password. So just wanted to let everybody know that. Uh, from our Department of Community Development, uh, you know that um, we um, had recently had a resignation of our director there. I had a nice send off there um, and our scrambling to quickly fill that as quickly as possible. We have 18 applicants and we have um, some follow up uh, second uh, interviews this coming Friday and there are kind of a couple of folks that uh, met the requirements and looked good. So we'll get back to you on that uh, as well. So I wanted you to know we're working hard and fast for that. Um, I think you heard heard i sent an email i'm not sure if we've announced it in this setting that uh john south south southard um accepted the deputy chief position so i think you know that he will start may 1st and we'll have a formal um uh, ceremony for that and we'll send out an uh, invitation to those of you that want to try to make that and uh, I think I also mentioned Paul is our new public works director. He will be starting in the middle of May, and that will still give us plenty of time before Sarah, unfortunately, retires uh, the 1st of July. So anyway, uh, he was up this weekend. Uh, on Friday, he came up and met the staff and spent some time touring and whatnot. So I um, wanted you to know that that's moving forward, too. Um, we did have a couple of police officers uh, that... Uh, recently went through some drone pilot uh, preparation and will be taking uh, sitting for their 107 course uh, with the FAA. And uh, so we're thinking about um, moving forward with some, um, some efficiencies in that way and some safety things. Also, of course, I think you also are aware that because we've got a new chief, now a new deputy chief, that has opened up sergeant and detective as well as a school resource officer position. So it's kind of a domino effect when you only have 20 people, you start changing a few of them and so it, so it goes. And so those will all be happening in the next couple of months too. So very exciting opportunities for our policemen and the whole department there. And finally, from Public Works, um, we recently secured three grants from Clallam County. Uh, this, these come uh, by way of our commissioners approving 1.6 million in uh, street and grants for our streets. 
uh, that, that will be going toward Priest Road, River Road, and Washington Street between 7th and 9th. Mostly, re, mostly for resurfacing and, and striping and whatnot, but some uh, drainage improvements along Washington as well. So you'll be seeing that happening in the coming months. Uh, also, because of the uh, complete street ordinance that uh, you all passed last year, the city of Squimant now is officially eligible to uh, for this complete street funding program from the state transportation board. And so we just got made notice of that. So again, additional funding, thanks to wonderful public works department, probably Megan and her and staff. And so that's great news. And finally, from me, we had a very successful fishing derby day at Kerry Blake on Saturday. Like five to 600 people were down at the park. It was amazing. Um, uh, you know, massive attendance there. Gary uh, Meyer from Public Works was there with staff um, during the entire event, setting up and taking down and just a very, you know, great community event. Uh, so wanted to call his name out and thank Public Works for and Parks for making that happen. So with that, um, that ends the different department updates. And then I think at, per your agenda, you have two uh, brief uh, uh, agenda items and presentations from staff tonight. One is, of course, from our police chief. Uh, regarding RV dwellings and graffitis. And then uh, I think you'll find Sarah's uh, presentation quite informational and worthwhile like you did last week when she talked about our water. And uh, it's just good for you guys, uh, for all of us to know how we're sitting with development. So I'll defer to you, Mayor, to move forward with the agenda. Thank you. All right, Chief. Good evening, Council. Uh, Mike Hill, Chief of Police. And what we have for you today was a presentation uh, Councilor Downer asked for last council meeting. It was put into the agenda packet, a uh, brief PowerPoint, uh, very high level overview uh, to address the three questions that were asked, assuming I got them correct, which was the city's response to people living in RVs. Uh, number two was the cost of towing cars and RVs. And number three was the city's response to graffiti. So I appreciate the interest of council and the opportunity to share with uh, council and the public where we currently sit. Um, clearly these are constantly changing uh, issues so much in change that there was a court hearing on one today. Uh, it was federal. So in about six months, we might know what they said, <laughs> um, which kind of puts us in the dilemma that we're in now. Um, clearly I am not an attorney, so this was not uh, trying to give you any legal opinion on the matter, but just kind of the, at the level of which PD kind of needs to understand the nuances so we know how to uh, respond to these types of types of issues. Um, oddly, I was gonna mention and remind people that this is a national problem. However, I spent Saturday in Victoria, British Columbia, and it's much bigger than a national problem. Um, it's as present there uh, up in Canada as anywhere around here, it appears. Um, overall, hopefully a couple of themes showed through on that presentation. Uh, number one is just the constantly changing and very litigious um, court decisions that are being made, many of them from uh, the Northwest states. Uh, and the other is kind of the individualist approach that needs to be taken because every person experiences homelessness, has their own individual reasons why they are in that position and hopefully as creative as solutions to remedy that as best we can, uh, which involves a lot of other community stakeholders, including council that uh, will probably need to keep these, what we learn in mind for future decisions that you may have to make. So that said, um, any questions I can answer? I'm not sure how well a brief presentation can cover such a uh, complex issue, but I tried. Yes, Kathy. Um, does the council need to uh, change its budget for next year for dealing with this issue? We, um, specifically to persons living in, in cars and RVs, uh, we increased, uh, the PD increased the budget this year just because uh, we saw towing costs increasing. 
Uh, as you saw in the presentation, there's still kind of some unknowns. The uh, billing structure was changed. There's additional fees for uh, demolition should a RV be towed. Um, so I think we set ourselves up uh, based on kind of last year's figures uh, to address that. So at this time, maybe too early to tell, but I think we're, we're doing okay. Um, the reality is, is we don't tow a lot of vehicles that people are living in. As a matter of fact, we don't tow any that people are living in. Um, they often become abandoned uh, when somebody moves out, if you will, um, or uh, they move on to private property and it's the responsibility of a property owner, such as businesses to tow. So budget-wise, I apologize for the long-windedness, uh, but I think we're good right now. Thank you. And you're talking, you're talking about RVs and cars on public streets yes. that you have to deal with. Yeah. The ones on public property is a different issue. Correct. Thank you. Thank you, um, Chief Hill. Um, again, I uh, really appreciate, um, I've, as I mentioned before, became aware of this issue when we, um, when you took me on a really great tour of your department. Thank you. Um, and uh, yeah, important to understand that, that there's so much um, so many important rules and, and legislation to help everyone on all sides to, to help you guys do your job and to, um, to protect folks who are in that situation. Um, I do have a question from your presentation um, in uh, the, by local towing company. Um, it, one of the slides says in progress, a local towing company has a new storage yard under construction with contracts with local jurisdictions for space dedicated to RV storage. By local, do you mean in Clallam County or in Kitsap or Clallam. there in Clallam? Yeah. And those pictures that were in that presentation were from last week, I believe. Um, it is a finite amount of space um, and it is shared between three agencies. So it will get us by for the meantime, but uh, long term, we'll, we'll see what occurs. And again, a lot of that depends on where laws take us. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Am I on? Okay. So in Seattle versus Long, you talked about like the process for impounding cars. Do you impound cars that are being lived in in Squim? And if so, like what's the process for getting those back? We don't. Mm -hmm. uh, we have not. I think there's some limited circumstances of which you can. Again, I'm not a lawyer, but there's all kinds of social implications you need to look at as well. One is, you know, they're parked in front of your house and, and some residents don't look like that. The other is, uh, if you take some take that away, you're taking a person's only form of shelter away. So we try to take all these into considerations, which is why the more individualized approach is needed. Um, and the goal is housing people ultimately and get them connected to resources. Fortunately, as one of our mem audience members was talking uh, during the break, is we do have a pretty good uh, rapport with uh, uh, a lot of people living around town and have got voluntary compliance on public property 100% of the time. Sometimes it takes longer than we want, but they're no worse off. The The individual that's unhoused is no worse off for it. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm sorry, I'm going to ask a question that I already know the answer to, but I'm asking it for the benefit of everyone in the room. Um, when you are, when you would respond to these calls, is it just a police officer that's going out to these calls? Um, no, depends on time of day, uh, weekdays, weekends, business hours or not. Oftentimes it's code enforcement because we're dealing more with a parking issue than a criminal issue. Um, so, you know, the response to a, you're parked on the street is you can get a $25 ticket. But what we do is con uh, follow up with the person. And we also bring in uh, our designated crisis responder and then engage anybody. There's different programs like, uh, rediscovery or the real teams and uh, connect them and, or inform them later. So um, kind of trying to attack any problem is from an, as many angles as we can to get them connected with probably more than one resource that they need. So that's why it takes, I think, more, multiple people to kind of work on those issues. Was that the right answer? Yes, okay. <laughs> Thank you very much for doing the presentation. I appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. I'm sure there'll be more questions and we'll look into those as well.
Thank you for the research on Seattle versus Long. That's an important one. Anything else from council? You'll uh, recall that we, uh, the PD has uh, provided some fact sheets that are that uh, try to address some of this. We may upload this presentation as well to our website just for the, the good of the uh, public so that you can point your constituents that way. It, it's complicated and, and hard, um, but we'll, at least you have some resources to point to. Thank you. Thank you. All right, appreciate the help. All right, 7C development review. Good evening, Council. Sarah Van Osdell, Public Works Director. And this evening, I would like to just give you a brief update on uh, current development in the city. And please bear with me while I navigate, but it's always terrifying waters to me to be virtual and live at the same time. You're not alone, Sarah. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> Good. We, we made this presentation last week to our all staff um, uh, twice a year group. Um, a lot of our uh, a lot of our staff were unaware of this and and thanked us for it. A lot of them all have parts to play in this, but to see the the grand picture of uh, and the significance of it, they said was very helpful. So that's when we thought, well, let's make sure the council sees it as well. And I've burned up enough time, so <laughs> back to you, Sarah. Okay. Well, like I said, this is just current development in Squim and. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people think that there's not much development going on. There is a lot going on behind the scenes. You don't always see it until it happens, but it does affect everybody in the city in terms of, you know, city staff. It's not just public works that end up with more streets to plow and sweep and street lights to maintain and catch basins to back out. But the police also have more streets to patrol, more citizens to respond to. Finance has more utility accounts to administer. City council has more constituents to answer it for, answer to and represent. So it really does impact everybody. When I say current development, I'm talking about the stuff that is already in the pipeline when development happens, there's usually pre-application conferences, and that's when a developer is coming to the city to say, I'm thinking about this, I'm thinking about this piece of property, what can I do here? Is this even feasible? We're not talking about that right now because that's not really part of the public process. This is after all those kinks have been worked out and they're basically certain that they can move forward with their development and we have received a formal application. So that's what, this is, is formal applications that are in some uh, stage of that process. And then I just wanted to briefly give you a sort of an overview. This is a DC Department of Community Development and Public Works function. And it starts with DCD where they come in and they get their permits for land use, which is what am I gonna do with this land? Is this the right zoning for it? Am I allowed to do this here? And I'd like to describe it as like sort of a 2D review where you're just looking at their site map and here's where your building's going, here's where your parking lot's going. Do you have enough stalls for the use of the building? Or this is your cul-de-sac, here's where your streets and sidewalks are going. So that's sort of the 2D review. And then once they get that actual approval from Department of Community Development, then it moves over to Public Works and we do what I call a 3D review. Now we're talking, we're going deep, right? We're going into utilities, we're going into water and sewer and stormwater grading, that type of thing, as well as the infrastructure that they're proposing, does it meet our engineering standards? So we're looking at all of that. And then once that passes our approval process, we issue them a site construction permit, and then they can actually go out there and start to build. And we're still involved at that point because now we're inspecting everything that they're going that they're doing in the field to make sure that what they say they're going to do is what actually happens so that we don't have failing infrastructure 20 years down the road. So you may have already known that. I didn't know that. Um, I think it's a helpful just to be able to get the whole picture. After Public Works then accepts the infrastructure, it then goes back to Department of Community Development who does all like the final plat approval files with the county and then the developer is ready to sell lots and build. Any questions? 
Okay. Um, let's see. So Jacob Carlson, our wonderful um, GIS analyst, made this. It's it's like a story map for us, but what it does is it shows you all the development that's going on in Squim. And so right now, let's see what if, if I'm going to get rid of this guy over here. Make this a little bigger. So you can see all the different developments all around town. And we'll start over on the east side. So we have Mariner's Outlook 3, which is 82 lots. This development is currently, the site construction permit has been approved. It hasn't been issued. We're waiting for the developer to come in and pick it up, but he'll be ready to go to construction just as soon as he picks it up. Then we have Cedar Ridge 3, which is 24 lots. That's in preliminary plat process right now. If we move north to Willow Creek, I should be pointing out this map is kind of hard to tell where you are, but here's Cary Blake Park right in here. This is Broadmoor. This is West Squim Bay Road along here. So Willow Creek, his development has already been approved. He's selling lots right now. And then we have a welcome addition, an apartment complex, 16 units. We haven't seen one of those for some time. That's off of Still Road. And then moving up into the north a little bit, um, this is Hendrickson right here. I'm going to zoom in a bit so you can see. There's actually two developments up here. These are the, the Grubb Brothers, and they are doing two-story townhomes. Um, so there's an eight unit um, complex right there on Hendrickson. And then over here between Fifth and Gary Oak, there's a 10 unit complex, the same way, same design. I mean, uh, I'm losing this. Also built by the Grubb brothers or those are two different um, developers? Same developers. Oh, yep. okay. Sorry, I don't have a mouse that I'm used to using. So then we move south into what I call the mother load of development. And this is all south of 101. And this is um, uh, Miller Road right here, Squim Ave, the interchange. And here's Miller Road, Here, Bella Vista, 23 lots. We call this the ski slope because it's pretty darn steep. It's got grades up to 14% and there'll be some nice view lots out of that. Um, here is the Habitat for Humanity project, up to 50 units that can go into there. Um, again, Squim Avenue. The white one is Habitat for Humanity. This is um, my uh, foothills. My name disappeared. So foothills goes between Squim Avenue and 3rd Street and it's traversed by Bell Creek. So it'll be a, a subdivision that's kind of split in two. As we move to the west, there's Rain Shadow Loop, which is 35 lots. If you go down 7th Avenue here and then go across McCurdy, 35 lots on Rain Shadow Loop. And up here, Rolling Hills. If you haven't been up 7th Avenue, drive up there. It's a huge development. They are in site construction right now, and all the they are actually installing stormwater today and sewer. And if you you look up there, all the heavy equipment up there just looks like little Tonka trucks scattered all over it. It's so big. And then finally, Legacy Ridge up here, 97 lots. That is also currently under site construction permit review. So if you've been counting on your fingers and toes, <laughs> you ran out. Um, 623 homes is what's um, con contained in these developments. Um, they're, you know, I, not probably workforce housing. It just depends on what the market does. But it, it, it will add um, a lot of development. And SQUIM has one7 people per home on an average. So that's about a thousand people 
added to our population when all this development goes through. I just thought that would be interesting. And this link is available if you're interested. I'm happy to send it to you. I need to show you one more thing quickly. Does the school district understand? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Jacob also, um, if you scroll down on this, he um, shows you the lot and then he also shows you the layout of the subdivision. So as you move through all of these, the apartments, there's again, the site plan that DCD approves, Cedar Ridge. Again, it just shows you how it's being proposed to be laid out. So a little neat tool there. Any questions? You say a thousand new people, but people who already live here could also purchase. buy purchase. Mm -hmm. Do you know if any of these will meet our definition of affordable housing? or workforce housing? I don't know what price points are at this point. I'm guessing that the apartment complex and most likely the townhomes might, but we don't have any idea for price points right now. And the habitat for and the habitat. humanity. And the habitat, yeah. sorry, forgot mm -hmm. about that one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Other than the habitat site, are any of these developments either age restricted like 55 and older or income restrictions? Um, none of them, to my knowledge, are age restricted or income restricted. And there's more coming, as you probably are aware, that we're just in pre-conversations uh, with. So that's probably not to be discussed like in this same category or group, but yes, additional. Uh, and... Um... I'm sorry if you already said this, but this is what you're showing us is what's available on our website, or this is, um, this is a presentation. Uh, this is the story. This is the GIS system of the city. This is just a GIS based presentation that Jacob put together for us so that I could show you on a map mm -hmm. all the developments all together. Most of these projects are on our city website under current development on the DCD page. Yes, that's that's what I, yeah, thank you. They, they, it all, the information looked vaguely familiar, but there was some new, new ones. Um, that, so yeah. thank you. Yeah, I just thought it would be helpful to see it like all together on a map. We just send it to council. Yeah. Yep. Sure. You're welcome. And that's all we had, Mayor, from City Manager. Any other questions? Why Sarah still up here? None. All right. Thank you. All right. Item eight. Public comment. City Clerk. The public comment sheet will be collected for those attending in person. Comments will be taken every other one from those attending virtually, by phone, or in person. For individuals attending in person, please take a moment to silence your cell phones. For those attending virtually or by phone, if you would like to provide public comment, please now press the raise your hand icon, or if on the phone, press star nine. Each person will have three minutes to speak on any topic, and there will be a timer visible on the screen. A total of 30 minutes will be permitted to provide comment. Please state your name and if you are representing an organization. Again, for those of you virtual or on the phone, please now press the raise your hand icon or star nine. Anthony, would you please start us off with a virtual attendee? Yes, the first uh, we will have tonight will be Mr. Walker. Mr. Walker, you may now unmute your microphone and address the council. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, hi, uh, Chris Walker, um, 241 Fircrest. Um, this is, I should have done this before, but I really wanted to uh, say a thank you to all the city councilors as well as the city staff for all the work that you guys did in this past legislative session to help pass a rent stability bill that is so very much needed, um, not just here, in SQUIM, but throughout Washington. Unfortunately, um, it didn't happen again this year, um, but we came probably the closest we ever would have, um, except for some of our 
uh, unfortunately, some of our uh, legislative district um, legislators who did not vote for it. I also want to give out a shout out to Brandon, Vicki, and um, Kathy Downer for going the extra mile and reaching out to Senator Van DeWay and encouraging him to please support this bill. Unfortunately, he didn't. So thank you once again for the staff and all you city council for doing uh, the work that you've done this past year. And hopefully, not hopefully, uh, we're going to get it this come in, in 2025, I'm, I, I believe so. Thank you. All right, our first in person, Karen Hogan. Now, yes. um, thank you. My name is Karen Hogan. I live at 4294 Happy Valley Road, and I am glad to be able to feel safe enough to mention my address. Um, late last century, to be 1987 to be precise, I worked for American President Lines. I was part of a team of, of technical writers in the IT department. My supervisor brought me in to give me my um, my uh, up, what, what my annual, whatever that thing is called. Um, and uh, he let me know that if I learned new technology, that I could get a promotion. And then because he was a dodo bird, he let me know that my colleague would get a promotion if he started coming in on time. They were both white males, surprise, surprise. This came to mind when I read that we have lost Sharice. When I read that how many different jobs she had, how many different hats she had, and what her salary was, I thought, uh-oh, this sounds kind of familiar. I'm 75. Most women my age, if not all, know how often women carried the weight on their shoulders, on their backs, and were not compensated or recognized accurately. I think the loss of Sharice is huge. We've lost institutional knowledge, knowledge about our community, and just someone who was, I think, a really special person. Um, so when I read that she had quit, the words of Obi-Wan Kenobi came into my brain. I feel a, 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 a disturbance in the force. I hope as we move forward that we do not be a city, which is a business that doesn't know how to retain people and does not reward or compensate people based by what they do, but and that we get rid of this sexism and racism and all of those other isms. So here's on to the 21st century. And I'd just also like to say about the autism that I would love to see the word disorder taken out of autism. Thank you. Anthony, do we have anyone else online? We do not. All right, Vicki Maples and Princess. Sorry, I didn't want to mess that up. <laughs> I've been practicing it too. Uh, greetings, everyone. <clears throat> I'm Vicki Maples, director of the 129th Squim Irrigation Festival. Um, I live at 932 East Cedar in Squim. The blue flags are out on Washington Street, so that means the festival is coming. I do want to thank the council and the city staff for all their support in helping us prepare for this event. On behalf of the Festival Family of Volunteers, I want to invite everyone to the festival. It takes place on May 3rd through the 11th. There's a variety of events taking place. I have special events uh, invites here for the council and manager, and the manager. And uh, congratulations to the new counselor. Your invite will be in the mail soon. <laughs> Uh, we're very proud of our royalty. Um, they continue to amaze me with their um, energy and their dedication. So I'd like to introduce Princess Kyla. She will extend a further invitation on behalf of the royalty. And please excuse us as we leave. Kyla has other duties to perform, so we will be leaving when she's done. Thank you. Hello, I'm Princess Kyla Blake. I've lived in Squim my entire life with my parents, Izumi and Owen, and my younger brother, Mason. I love to draw, paint, and travel. I travel to Japan every year to visit my grandparents. I'm also fluent in Japanese. 
Um, I also enjoy baking. My favorite part of it is cake decorating and also eating. I plan to attend a four-year college and on the behalf of Squim Irrigation Festival Royalty, I would like to attend the city council to the Squim Irrigation Festival during the first two weeks of May. And I have brochures to pass out. Thank you. Anthony, is there anyone else online? No, there is not. And that concludes public comment. <clears throat> Moving on to item nine, consent agenda. City clerk. All right, it's a long one. Claim vouchers totaling $1,053,552.08. City Council retreat minutes from April 1st, 2024, and the City Council meeting minutes from April 8th, 2024. Squim Municipal Code 8.30, fire restrictions and ordinance. Squim Municipal Code 10.04, model traffic and ordinance. Squim Municipal Code 10.09, compression braking and ordinance. Squim Municipal Code 17.32.110, two access points, an ordinance. Hearing examiner contract, the municipal funding contract for Squim Health and Housing Collaborative, police vehicle purchase, Cary Blake Park replacement bridges, Parks, Arbor and Recreation Board appointment, a resolution, and letter of support for the recompete grant. I just have one um, error I want to I want us to be able to fix. So, on nine F, the two access points, it says at its meeting on April 9th, and it should be April eighth. I don't want to hold up the whole um, consent agenda, so I think I can make a motion including that change in it, and we can still move forward. What is treated as a Scribner error? Okay. Cool. I would also like to point out um, that there are Scrivener's errors in the letter to um, Assistant Secretary Castillo for the um, recompete grant. Um, yeah, there's a couple of them in there. Um, just uh, a misspelling and um, a couple, they're just grammatical errors, no, nothing huge. All right, we'll get those fixed. Kathy. Council, if I may. Um, purposes of the record, Christina Nelson Gross, city attorney. Um, I will look to Heather to correct me, but um, it is my understanding that it is our practice to not um, modify the letters of support to that degree. And I see Heather nodding yes, right? Because we don't wanna be responsible for the things that people are proposing to council. So we always encourage people to make sure that the letter is exactly how you want it to be presented to council. Um, you know, if council did as they did just now, if you want us to correct those simple grammatical errors, we are happy to do so, but just know that going forward that we typically don't go and start correcting people's submitted letters for all of the reasons that you could probably imagine. Are they grammatical or are they, you need actual change? Well, yeah, there's a word misspelled and um, trying this from, I should have, I should have detailed all of them. I just, I didn't, I didn't make an itemized list. I'm sorry. But they're actually just like gra grammatical errors. Yeah. Okay. I, I think that's fine. If that's sorry. Okay with that. And sorry to whoever wrote the letter. Your letter is great. Just, <laughs> sorry. You just want to get with Sarah and point, point those out to make sure that they're addressed? Sure. Okay. Council okay with that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? I move to approve the, sen the consent agenda as discussed. I just second it. Any further discussion? Any opposed? Seeing none, motion passes. 
All right, general business, 10A, Scrim and Missile Code 8.38, Special Events, First Touch. Good evening, Mayor and members of the Council. Emma Jane Garcia, Parks and Facilities Specialist with the Parks and Events Division, for the record. This agenda item before you is a first touch on a code scrub to the special events chapter. Changes were made to make the event permitting process clearer to event organizers and staff. Also proposed is a new miscellaneous park use permit that will benefit the public by reducing cost for specialized park activities with minimal impact on city services and resources. And I'm here to answer any questions you might have. Anything from council? If not, I will entertain a motion. I move to direct staff to schedule a public hearing for the next available meeting to prepare a proposed ordinance. I'll second that. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Any opposed? Seeing none, motion passes. Thank you, Council. Item 10B, Centennial Place Park Design Update. I just have to quickly say that Emma Jane did not mention that it's also called the MPUP. <laughs> so and that acronyms, that's one of the better ones. Um, <laughs> acronyms and bounds, sorry. We won't use it, we promise. Um, Hannah Merrill, Parks and Events Manager. Um, good evening to everybody and welcome to Councilwoman Hartman to the, to the council. Um, I am bringing to you tonight um, as requested by a motion um, in December, we wanted to have time for the city to do outreach and then bring back to you the public comment and design option um, recommendations from the staff. And so in the packet that uh, you were given, there was kind of the rundown memo of what came from those, um, those outreach actions. And then also there was a recommendation from the staff. And so, um, the staff would like to move forward with the recommendation. Um, this way we can bring the, rec um, the recommended design, which is taking the base of one of the designs called flow and bringing in some other elements from the other designs that people thought would be um, and kind of improve that design by the feedback of the public and to bring that to 30% um, design. So we're um, competitive for getting funding from the Recreation and Conservation Office. And I don't know if everyone had a chance to review all of the documents, but that is what we're bringing tonight. I think that there may be another sign-in sheet, um, Sarah, because my husband and I attended that and his comments ended up on that, but are there, we must, there must've been a second sheet for people to sign in that attended that. When we had the open house, Yeah, our names aren't on it, but we were there at the very end because he's he's the one that wanted more animals cows. and cows. Right. Yes, exactly. <laughs> cows in the farmyard. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Any other comments, questions from council? If none, I will entertain a motion. I do have a comment. Um, sounds like um, th th if I just heard you correctly, you're saying that flow that we're that that they're moving forward with the flow design and then they're adding other components of it. Okay, interesting. Thank you. Components from the other two designs. Correct. Correct. Yes, popular components. Correct. Um, and and when you look at the open house, and then also the survey responses um, that kind of took overall comments. And it wasn't just like, hey, what's your favorite, least favorite, it was like, what are your favorite bits and pieces from all of these designs? And um, the flow one really highlights having um, a, a designated area for a um, 
a feature as well as during the holiday time where the tree would go. It's very designated and that seemed like it was a pretty important, um, you know, request from the community and from the downtown mer merchants to set that as a, you know, special part of the park. So the flow design really highlights having that as uh, a designated spot for those things. And then there were other features that, that over and over through that feedback came forward and the, the um, staff wanted to bring that design forward, but with these additional features from other designs. Yep. I'm ready to make a motion. Move to direct staff to move forward with the recommended design, amend the contract with JET to complete a 30% uh, design. I'll second that. Moved and seconded, any further discussion? Any opposed? Seeing none, motion passes. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right. 10C 2023 Annual Public Record Request Report, City Clerk. Hello, Heather Robley, Acting City Clerk. It's time for the Annual Public Records Report for you all. Um, I included a couple slides that were the same as last year for the benefit of new counselors. Um, just to kind of um, understand the PR, outline the PRA basics um, and the process for submitting a public records request and how that flow happens from the request all the way through to release of the records. Um, I'm available for any questions. Anything from council? So there's a large increase in requesting, um, or there will be, we're requesting the film from the officer's cameras. Mm -hmm. And that happens in every city, doesn't it? It does. Um, last year, I think we had only one request for body cam, but it was, you know, the body cams went live in October. And that was the only request that we had. We've received several requests this year and it's, um, um, it's been quite time consuming. I will just give you, um, I wrote down in my note, a sneak peek, since we don't have, I mean, I'm excited for next year's report because uh, it'll be able to, we'll be able to see what, how the increase with the body cam affected the public records uh, staff. Year to date, we have 125 requests and year to date, we have over $9,000 in staff costs and over 200 hours of staff time. So we, uh, Talina and I process quite a few body cam requests for footage. Is there a benchmark in staff time spent working on public records where you end up thinking, yeah, we're going to need another FTE for this? I don't know what the benchmark is, but that's our goal is to provide you with as much information as possible. Uh, like I indicated, so one minute of body cam footage is equivalent to five minutes for staff time to review it. And that's an average that's across the state. So Seattle PD took the lead because obviously they produce a lot of body cam footage and they conducted a study, which has been the kind of the guidepost for other agencies throughout the state. Um, so it takes us a while to review send it to lens lock, make sure that they got the re, you know, we have to review it again. And then if it's good to go, then we can release it to the requester. So stay tuned for, for next year's stats. Same and together. I'm s sorry, I just wanted to interject this and, and um, Christina Nelson Gross, Christina um, city attorney for the record. Um, so Councillor Anderson, you asked if we had kind of like a guidepost in the, staff, the amount of staff time that we spend. And um, the answer to that is yes, but I don't know how often we adhere to it because of the practicalities of that. Um, our current, and Heather will correct me, our current disclosure guide limits us or ha says that we'll spend, is that 20%? of our time correct yeah 20 percent of our time which is the equivalent of one day of week in responding to public records but for you know a variety of reasons whether it be people's need whether um it would be you know the ability to try to monitor their time we don't always get to meet that 
challenge. So um, I just wanted to have that clarification in there. And then the actual tracking of staff time, Heather is correct, will provide a much more informative review with the um, body cam and coming online eventually will be the dash cam footage as well, which will be another layer. So um, yeah, we, we do have a we have a do do have guideposts. So is your trend, are you trending an increase in public records requests overall? And have, have you at any point been subject to the full over $100,000 threshold for JLARC reporting? No, we haven't reached that amount. And so those numbers are going to be due in July. The beginning of July is when we submit that report. And we do that voluntarily because we don't meet the $100,000 mark. We're not required to, but we do that um, as good practice. And the, this, the trend from last year stayed about the same. The number of requests actually went down, but the time went up. Um, we expect that to increase next year, well, for 2024. I have a quick question. What is JLARC? <laughs> I, it's an acronym. I, I do not know what it stands Joint for. It's <laughs> legislative committee that like supports the requests from the legislature to gather data on different topics that come through on bills. Can't That's remember not exactly. the acronym, but that is the purpose <laughs> of a, it. Yeah. Joint legislative audit and review committee. Yes. Thank I sit you. in on a lot of those. <laughs> Thank you. I just learned something. So the follow-up to that that I'm, I'm under, unfamiliar with is that there's apparently a threshold that then kicks in requirements for the city to do a different level of reporting or? It, just becomes, it becomes mandatory once you reach the $100,000 mark, then you're required to report to the legislature. Okay. This is another unfunded mandate. We do not receive any funds for that is correct. These records. This Thank is not an unfunded mandate. This was an initiative from the will of the people of Washington State in 1971 or 72. 1972. But it doesn't reimburse the city for what they spend on actually carrying it out. No, the initiative explicitly prohibits jurisdictions from collecting for staff time, except in very limited circumstances. Got it. Thank you. And review of body cam footage is the only place that we can recoup our costs. And we have to make sure that those costs are the most economically feasible, i.e. cheapest, but still decent quality around. So even then there's, there's guardrails on them for good reason, but guardrails nonetheless, so. Anything else from council? All right, this is an info only item. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, item 11, youth liaison. All right, so for the record, this is Georgia Bullard, youth liaison. Um, so we are starting duck sales in Squim, Port Angeles through Olympic Medical Center. They sell little rubber ducks as a fundraiser for them. And we, as Squim High School, that we can sell ducks and get a percentage of the profit that comes in from selling those ducks. So clubs such as Associated Student Body or HOSA, Future Health Professionals, we all sell ducks. Um, um, United Way has done a community a varsity letter and community service lately where if you get 145 hours of community service, you can letter in community service, which means you get a little letter, a certificate and so on. So this year, uh, I believe we had 11 students from SQUIM lettering in community service. Uh, most of them like vastly exceeded the 145 hours. Um, yeah, we had a little celebration for them on the 18th in Port Angeles and so for Interact Club at Squim High School, our community service club, we are still working on Road Like Joe. We're still making sure that we have all of our paperwork done, getting a little bit uh, down to the nitty gritty, making sure we have all of insurance covers everything and so on and so forth. Uh, Interact is also planning an Earth Day event where we'll clean up our Squim High School campus in honor of its Earth Day, 
Earth Month and whatnot. And yeah, other than that, students in Squam have just been really enjoying the sunshine. Uh, no one really wants to be in school when the sun's out. So we're all looking forward to summer. <laughs> Thank you for your very honest report. <laughs> All right. Any reports from council? Yeah, I have a couple. Uh, I went to the Cullum Transit Board, and there was just a quick uh squim portion that i wanted to report on their interlink ridership for squim has increased by almost 102 percent which was like crazy to me that's incredible um from about 1500 people to almost 3200 riders um another quick uh, agenda item from that meeting was that the Clellum Transit Board approved the purchase of 10 paratransit vehicles uh, to replace the paratransit vehicles that they have, um, which have met or exceeded their useful life benchmarks. And uh, side note here, Squim Beautiful Day is on um, Saturday, April 27th. And if you are interested in volunteering, you can go to their website at squimbeautifulday.org and sign up to volunteer. And we would love to have you. Thank you. Just wanted to um, ask my fellow counselors about, um, maybe I'm misremembering Mike, but two years ago when I started on council, the police department had the ordinance for purchasing them amended because they couldn't get any hybrid vehicles because of COVID, the supply chain, and apparently from your email about the Ford uh, cars now, they're having a hard time getting them. But I was wondering if the council would consider in the future adding that back into the purchase agreements for per pursuing hybrid vehicles if available. And not tonight, but in the future, if you guys would consider putting that back. And uh, I'm not sure if it's feasible, but maybe we should talk about it. And also, um, I just wanted to say when Harmony brought up about Arbor Day, um, that, are you okay, Sarah? Oh, okay. There's a state mandate, and I'm not sure, Christina can tell you what it is, but we are required to actually obtain uh, hybrid electric uh, non-fossil fuel vehicles whenever possible. And so we absolutely do that unless it's something that like emergency response or something like that, we do it. I appreciate that, thank you. I understand about the availability though. There's nothing you can do about that. But anyway, earlier Harmony uh, brought up uh, Arbor Day and I, it, I remembered something that my youngest son, who's now 31, the baby, when he was in second grade, he brought home this little teeny pine tree sapling and named it Ed. And Ed was, he planted Ed in our front yard. And that dumb little tree lived for over 20 years it, it before, before it died from not being watered. But I did, that just reminded me that, and it meant so much to him that he be given this tree. So I think it's a wonderful teaching moment. And I'm so glad that the schools are still having Arbor Day activities because you never know there's gonna be some kid out there that you might reach or somebody that'll go into afford forestry or hydrology or something that will help the rest of us in our old age. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Um, I look forward to the Arbor Day event at 1230 in Cary Blake on Friday, and I hope you all come. Um, I was at the Squim Arts Commission this afternoon, and uh, they uh, the submission deadline for the third quarter um, art show in the lobby is May 15th, 2024. Uh, the theme is to feel. And so if you are interested in submitting art for the um, next um, exhibition here at the City Hall, please um, contact Sarah Hurt, our arts coordinator, for more information on that. And um, I'm sorry, I should have looked it up, but I'm sure there's lots of information on our website about it as well. Um, the Arts Commission is doing great. 
Um, there's going to be a trash and show at the uh, Innovative Arts Fair during the um, Irrigation Festival. And the Arts Commission now is fully, um, uh, it has seven members, which is really exciting. It has been, um, uh, has not had enough members all year, but they're finally, we have seven commissioners. And this eve or earlier this a uh, afternoon, they elected officers. So I'm very excited for the Squim Arts Commission. They are very, very excited about the Creative Arts District Project. Or excuse me, not creative arts, just cre and I was corrected during that meeting too. Excuse me, I caught myself. Creative district, and there's a steering committee, and they are very excited to keep that moving forward. And um, yeah, so art arts commission's doing great. The um, oh, and they're doing a really cool um, art piece, community art piece. Um, and it's uh, upcycled art, and it just feels really good talking about that today on Earth Day. They collected um, uh, uh, bits of plastic that cannot be recycled, and Sarah Hurt, in, in it will be a community effort. The folks will be able to place those pieces on the finished um, or on a, a 3D rendering of the Arts Commission logo during um, the Innovative Arts Festival. So thank you. That's what I have from the Squim Arts Commission. Uh, just quick to report that uh, the conversation with uh, Jamestown Sklaum uh, tribal leadership on a land acknowledgement appropriate for city council has uh, evolved really nicely into a statement of coexistence and government to government relationships. And I appreciate uh, Rachel and Harmony uh, meeting with me and, and Lonnie, and we'll be prepared to bring that to the council at our next meeting. All right, we'll, we'll make sure it gets queued up. We'll queue it up, make sure it's there. Anything else from council? I got two things. Next meeting, I uh, also need to bring forward council committees and everything if we want to do changes since we have a full council now. Yes. Yes, thank you. Um, I would love, I, I have, um, if other folks are interested in being on finance, um, that would be great. I think she wants to give up the finance. Well, I'm on a lot of com committees and commissions and Monday only has so many hours in the day. Um, so yes, if other folks would like to take on finance, I can focus on the other commissions and committees that I'm working on. Um, thank you, yes. And then the second thing that I wanted to bring up is, so we heard tonight that we have 600 plus potential new homes coming in. We also had an item on Centennial Place Park. And there's also been talk about future park purchases. So I think the discussion needs to be made on how are we going to fund future park purchases, upgrades, whatnot. So I think that I would see if council is interested in, interested in having staff come back and give us a presentation on what something a uh, metropolitan parks district looks like, what the pros and cons are, if we were to have one for SQUIM as a way to, again, increase maintenance on our parks, future park purchases and the, and the likes. I think we need a way to, like I said, fund this area of the city that's held in high regard per the citizen survey. So. Um, if that's the way council would like to move, go, I would propose a motion to have staff come back with a presentation on at least that option and we can discuss anything further from there. So if there's anything else from council on this before I make a motion. All right. You ready? I want to make sure I get this right. So I move that we direct staff to bring back a presentation on the pros and cons of a metropolitan parks district for the city of Squim. Second. And does staff need any further clarification before? I have a question. 
Mayor. Um, when you say uh, for the city of Squim. I would say it's easy enough to go look on, say, MSRC or uh, to see what, you know, but is it tailored to Squim or is it just an overarching designation? My um, foggy memory, right? So, so caveats will come first. My foggy memory is that the Metro Park District is going to be a separate taxing district like SARC. And so you would need to look at what type of boundaries that may be. So you could theoretically do it for just the city of Squim city limits. You could theoretically ask for it for the um, uh, Squim school district taxing area as well. But um, I would say just include that if council okay, those type of scenarios okay. would be in what we'd look for. Th those types of options? Yeah. Okay. What it would look like for Squim. Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other clarification needed from, from staff? All right, we're moving to second. Is there any, any other discussion from council? Is there any opposed? All right, seeing none. Yep. Anything else from council? Other than that, what are the uh, four favorite words of this council? Oh. Attendance at Who's the next oh, yeah. in the meeting. Oh. I thought it was I moved the agenda. That's the favorite for, but Harmony doesn't want to adjourn yet. Um, I just want to welcome Nicole and thank her for oh. applying for the position and being brave enough to join us. And um, I know they all left, but also thank all of the other applicants. And it, you know, not always an easy decision. I think we made a good decision, but um, just want to thank everybody who participated too. Okay, so who yeah, William is still here, right? Didn't you apply or am I mistaken? No, nope, I'm sorry. No. Oh, <laughs> yeah, see, I was on Zoom. I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> don't take it in any offense, but, but I didn't. Okay, sorry. I, I thought you were William Stone. My apologies. Thank you for staying. All right. Thank you for staying for the whole meeting. <laughs> And, and uh, yes, thank you, everyone. Welcome, Nicole. Um, and yes, isn't democracy and civic engagement beautiful? So would somebody like to come to the next council meeting next to agenda? Man, yeah. Tuesday at uh, 2 o'clock. Anybody? I would be interested just to okay. see this. Yep. Next uh, Monday at two. Tuesday. Tuesday, May seventh at two p.m. Yeah. Is that here? Yeah, it's upstairs in there. Let's see. It's past my bedtime, and I got to work at eleven thirty tonight. All right. Four favorite words. I move to adjourn. <laughs> I second that. Now, see any opposed? Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you.